If I ain't drunk, then it ain't Christmas. You know where to stick those jingle bells. If I ain't hammered, it ain't hunker. Folks, welcome back. Adam here. Um... Gonna do a video. <laughs> Ended up going shopping over the Black Friday, Cyber Monday, whatchamacallit weekend, and uh, picked up a few things um, and got most of my Christmas shopping done for everybody else. Um, that's one thing I always dread doing, so I try to do it all in one shot, and then once it's done, it's like awesome. So, um, I don't know. Uh, I was gonna do. Uh, some gameplays and stuff, but it's just, I don't know. I, the collector in me has been winning out lately instead of the gamer. I I bought games, uh, but I haven't played anything in probably two weeks. Um, I, well, since I got The Last of Us and played a little bit of it, um, and then and then I just kind of got busy and, and haven't been able to get back to it, but uh, the collector in me always wins out. Uh, you all know that if you watch my channel, especially from the l long haul from the beginning. Um, I've always uh, been a collector more than a gamer, and I like to buy and collect these items. And I've played a lot of games. I haven't finished a lot, but I've played a lot, and I just I really enjoy the collecting as much, if not more, than actually playing the games. <laughs> So the collector me went out, uh, decided after a good Thanksgiving, came home, you know, I didn't go to bed till probably 1, 2 in the morning, you know, no big deal. Didn't plan on going out on Black Friday, but uh, f Friday morning I woke up kind of out of a dead sleep around 8 o'clock, and I think it's because I'm used to going to work, you know, on Friday, so it was one of those deals where I just kind of woke up, and... Uh, I was like, screw it, I'm going to go hit these vintage stocks. They were supposed to be open for four hours uh, that morning uh, before their normal, when they would normally open, and they were going to do the buy to get one thing. And, um, you know, they still had a few long box PlayStation games I wanted out at the Blue Spring store, which I did end up picking up uh, three more. Um, one of them was kind of a yeah, but the other two were all right. The only reason I got the yeah one is because it wasn't that expensive. And um, there were a couple other ones that were there uh, that I considered, but I just decided not to. Uh, one of them was Need for Speed. I have Need for Speed on the um, 3DO, uh, but I don't have it on the PlayStation, but they wanted ten dollars, and I'm not a huge racing fan. If it was more like six ninety nine or something, I probably would have bought it. Um, and uh, anyway, um, let me see what the other ones. I'm trying to think. Uh, they had that in the hunt still, which I don't really know what that is, but it was ten dollars, and I'm just like, I don't want that. And then they had this game called the Ryden Project or the Ryden. I think it was called the Ryden Project. Uh, but they wanted like twenty dollars for that one, and I don't know why that one was more expensive. Uh, maybe it's uh, a good, better game. I don't know, but I wasn't in the mood to spend twenty dollars. I was trying to stick around the uh, six ninety nine or less kind of mark, and I hit it with three, so I ended up picking up three out there, and then I ran out to two other ones. I ran out to the Independence one, which I have three items here from that one, and then I ran all the way out to Liberty one. Uh, yeah, I was busting ass running around, <laughs> and um, I picked up uh, another bunch of stuff, but I'm not going to do that in this video because I just don't want to make this video marathon long, so I thought I'd just do a second video um, in, in a couple days, you know, maybe next next week, I don't know, um, next, early next week. And uh, so anyway, I've got six items, and I did a little uh, Cyber Monday buy. Well, not Cyber Monday, but I was actually, I think I bought this Wednesday evening before Thanksgiving. I put in the order, and then it came uh, Monday. So um, anyway, let's get started. Uh, First off, yeah, I said I've got three PlayStation games, so we might as well start there. I uh, drove out there. Like I said, it was a pretty nice day. Got out there. When I walked in the door, and it was like 8-something, 
I was the only customer <laughs> in there, but it's funny because I was only in there about 15 minutes, and within that 15 minutes uh, span of me being in that store, there was like 20, 30 people in there by the time I was checking out. So I don't know if everybody was just kind of getting a little bit of a late start or what was going on, but anyway, I was glad I got out there early. Not that everybody was scoping long box uh, PlayStation games. Uh, but anyway, it was a buy two get one, so the most expensive one is always bought. So we'll uh, start with that. Uh, this game is a game that I have on the 3DO, and if you can see the uh, TV screen, um, it's the game that's running back there on my 3DO. Uh, I picked it up for the, and I did check these in the parking lot, <laughs> because we had problems, so I checked these to make sure that they were good. Um, but um, they had two copies of this, and so I got one of them, the better of the two. Uh, it's still got a little bit of a price sticker on the side which is just like a normal price sticker um, but then it has the other sticker on the front. This is one of those plastic black plastic cases that they glued the uh, artwork on so it's going to need a little bit of gluing down on the side and stuff but anyway we'll go ahead and show it. Uh, it is complete and that is the game P.O.D. <laughs> and uh, it says right here, P.O.D. is one of the best action games of 96. Prepare yourself for the most action-packed and infinite uh, directional 3D game experience you've ever experienced. Um, it doesn't really tell you what it's about, though, on the back, which is funny. It just says, select from a vast arsenal of weapons, including the power drill, flamethrower, and meat, meat seeker. Um... Basically, I think it's this ship, you're on a spaceship, and you're the cook, and you kind of get, there's like an abandoned ship, and you kind of get left behind, I think, and you're stuck on the ship, and it's kind of a Doom-style uh, deal, but you have this frying pan and stuff, it's kind of funny. Uh, I paid five ninety nine for it, as you could probably see by the sticker. Um, like I said, it's in good shape. There's a little bit of a sticker I need to get off here in this. Like I said, the cardboard is peeling out just a little bit, so we'll probably have to do some gluing and rubber banding uh, to get it back in shape. Um, and then here's the inside, the disc. We don't have a protective uh, foam piece in here, but the disc is, is in great shape. And... Um, the uh, instruction book is in crispy shape too, so I was uh, happy to pick it up for five ninety nine. Go ahead and show the instruction book, and uh, they're advertising Hardball Five underneath the uh, the instruction manual, uh, which. Uh, did come out for the PlayStation in the long box as well. I've seen it. I almost bought it at one point, but I didn't. So, anyway, I like the art on the cover of this. I thought it was really uh, cool. And um, I don't have P.O.D. in the box on the 3DO, so I decided that this was a pretty good purchase for uh, $5.99. It's funny because it seems like there was like I don't know, I don't know a lot of like bleed over as far as what consoles overlap each other but the 3DO kind of overlaps the Sega CD and the PlayStation it seems like part of their catalog is the same as the Sega CD and part of their catalog is the same as the PlayStation uh, this game is another one that's on the uh, 3DO that's also on the PlayStation it was $4.99 it's in a uh, clear plastic case uh, two CDs, uh, another uh, kind of a space shooter. This one does have um, some full motion video in it, but I think it's in cinema form, not in. It says 50 plus minutes of broadcast quality video. Um, it is the game for 4.99. Electronic Arts did it. It's called Shockwave Assault, and um, I have Shockwave. A couple different Shockwaves. Uh, on the uh, 3DO inbox. Um, this one was two discs. It just so happened that it did not have this extra tray in it, but I happened to have an extra plastic case with the dual tray uh, that I think was a Ground Zero Texas. 
um, case. And uh, a lot of times if I see a game like Ground Zero Texas or something that I know is supposed to have the, the two trays and I can see it in there and they only want like 3 or $4 for it, I'll go ahead and buy it um, just uh, for either trade or to get that case. Because uh, the dual cases, uh, there's a few different Sega CD games that use them uh, as well. But um, it does have the instruction booklet. It's behind the um, extra waste of plastic um, <laughs> that I just can't seem to get enough of. Um, but the instruction booklet is nice and crisp. Um, five bucks. I figured it was a good purchase. Yeah, I already have a copy of it on the uh, 3DO, but since we're collecting the black box, uh, long boxes on the PlayStation, uh, I figured it, it wouldn't hurt for $5, and it's a not a sports game, so I was all the merrier for buying it. Now, this final one <laughs> is a sports game, but I got it for free because I bought those two, and like I said, I... I wanted, I really wanted that riding project, but I wasn't going to pay $20 for it. And it just looked like another space shooter. And that's why I was like, yeah, I'm already buying one space shooter. And, um, you know, I just couldn't see doing it again, uh, buying another one and paying $20. Uh, so, anyway, I picked this up. It didn't look too bad on the package um, and it was it was free like I said so I went ahead and said you know what the hey uh, it's this game power serve 3d tennis uh, now there are sports games that I will buy I mean um, I'm not really a baseball fan or a football I'm not a hockey fan per se uh, but I do like golf games and uh, for the most part, I like volleyball and tennis games. I know that sounds weird, but um, like the um, Outlaw, the Outlaw series, especially on the PS2, they had Outlaw volleyball, Outlaw tennis, and Outlaw uh, golf. And that might be why I tend to like those games. I I like um, some of the Tiger Woods games in the 2000, uh, the, the golf games and stuff. Uh, I really dig those, but I'm not a huge fan of your traditional sports games or driving games for that matter. Um, but it was complete, uh, no, uh, protective foam as well. Uh, that's, you know, kind of a bonus half the time if you can get it. Uh, so... The disc looks good. I always forget that these are the black-backed discs until I lift them up and look at them. Uh, so, we picked these three up. We did it in a matter of about ten minutes. I looked in their uh, their case with their expensive shit in it again. All that stuff's still there. Uh, maybe over Cyber, Cyber Weekend, uh, they... Uh, sold some of it, I don't know, they probably found some suckers to buy that stuff for that price, but, you know, or moms and dads that are buying for, I don't know why they would be buying for their young kids, uh, maybe the Nintendo 64 stuff, but you'd think even that generation's kind of, you know, in their early 20s now, you know, at least, so, um, early to mid 20s, so, um, I don't know. I don't know who they would they would get to buy that stuff. So, anyway, uh, three more for the stack um, on the PlayStation, and uh, just so you can see real quick here, I kind of re uh, removed some not removed. I moved some stuff around, but I put my black boxes over here next to the uh, Sega CDs because um, we're starting to get quite a stack and it was starting to equal uh, that second stack there. As you can see, they're dead even, the Sega CD and the other ones, but I just bought three more of the uh, black boxes, so I think we're up to like 33 or so, so that's about a third of the ones that exist. Here's that P.O. game. Uh, it looks like he's got a gun or something now, but there is a part of it where he's running around with a frying pan. Looks like he's got some kind of jet pack, too. Sorry, I'm, like, staring down because I'm looking at it. Um, and then I moved uh, my my some of my um, Master System games and stuff over here. This is kind of a pile <laughs> that's amassed here. Um, 
that we're still working on. I I don't really know what to do with it. I would really like to display this stuff a little better, but you know how it is. You get a little cluttered sometimes. So anyway, uh, we picked up those three, and then I ran to the independent store, like I said, and that's what we're going to show next here. This is kind of a mishmash because I bought um, one kind of a collectible, which was not very expensive, and then I bought two games, and, and they're both kind of for two different systems. Um, because I really just wasn't seeing a lot there that I wanted, um, and so... Um, when I started walking around and looking, I noticed that they, um, once I got out to the independent store, they were not that busy either, but they didn't get like this huge rush like the other one did uh, while I was there. So I was looking around. I went over and looked in some of their comic books and stuff because I've really been watching uh, a lot of comic book men recently. I got kind of behind on it, and I watched about... Uh, 10 episodes in a row, and it made me really reminisce about when I collected comics. I know a lot of my comics aren't worth money, but that's not the important thing to me. I would, I really love this run of comics. Uh, I, li I like teams more than I like um, single p uh, players. Like, you got Spider-Man, which I do like Spider-Man, but uh, I would rather read a book like uh, The Fantastic Four or, you know, The X-Men or something, a team book, than uh, a solo character. And uh, one of my favorite teams back in the day, and this was before I really discovered X-Men, um, and I didn't really n even follow X-Men that closely. I think I I read X-Force for a little while because it was a fairly new book uh, when I started reading comics when I was like 15 or something. And uh, But my favorite series was this book called The New Warriors. And uh, they had a, a lot of kind of mid-level um, younger characters that they kind of threw together in a team. And then it just... It, people kept joining and it reached a point where there was like a ton of people on this team but add people like Firestar, Speedball, Nova, Night Thrasher, a character called Silhouette. Um, they, they were Namorita, um, Namor's cousin. Uh, they were uh, the core group initially, and then it kind of expanded off from there. But I really loved that series, and I think the first run of it only went like 75 issues. And I've got like f the first 49 issues, and then I'm missing... I think I've got... No, I take that back. I've got the first 48 issues, then I'm missing issue 49, and then I have 50, 51, and 52, and then I'm missing like 5 or 6 up to like 59, and then I don't have any of the rest of them. So I was really kind of looking through their comics and stuff at Vintage Stock to kind of see um, if they had them, and they had like, you know, the second run or the, the volume they call them Volume 2 or Volume 3, and they didn't have the old ones, which are the original series. And they actually premiered this group in Thor, uh, Mighty Thor, I think 411 and 412, which I do have those uh, two books as well. But um, they didn't really have a lot of the older stuff, but they got a lot of uh, like long boxes down below, and I started looking through there, and they're all mix like mishmash mixed up in there and stuff. But I did notice a few New Warriors titles, although I already had them, so it was just kind of one of those deals where I'm like, this is going to take more time than I have uh, this morning uh, to look through these boxes and try to find some ish back issues because most of them are like a buck or two, you know, it's really not that big a deal. Uh, but I was like, I'm going to have to put this off for another day. So I'm going to put it off for another day, but I would like to at least complete that first run, which is about 24 books, and I think I'm missing one more annual. I think they put out four annuals, and I only have the first three. So um, enough comic talk. <laughs> um, 
So anyway, I was over by their collectibles case because that's where or the comic books are. And I was kind of glancing in there and I noticed uh, a little goodie in there that wasn't too expensive. And, you know, I wasn't sure uh, how old it was or whatever, but it intrigued me, so I went ahead and got it. But anyway, uh, we'll show it last just because it's not a game-related thing. And then um, I went back over and was looking through the games uh, because I was, you know, trying to find if there was even anything else that I wanted there, um, and I stumbled across uh, a few Sega Master System games, and anytime I see these, I always forget which ones I already own, <laughs> and it just so happens I already own this one, but I went in and picked it up again for $3, it's one of the Sega card games, and it's uh, Fighting Falcon uh, F-16, Fighting Falcon, um, the reason why I bought it is because I wasn't sure that I had it for one, and for two, it had the little plastic sleeve on the game. Um, but when I got home and looked at my other copy that I already have, it was actually in a little bit better shape than this one, even though I just bought this one. Um, it still has a hang tab. Um, so I took the plastic little sleeve and put it on my other copy. Uh, it just so happens, let me see, what do I have? I've got Super Tennis, F-16, Fighting Falcon, and Spy vs. Spy are the three that I have. Uh, there's four other ones, I believe, that, four or five. I've heard, uh, I have heard rumor of eight, but I think there's seven. I know, uh, Ghost House is one. A game called Teddy Boy is one. There's one called like Transbot or something. So that's six. And I'm not sure what the final one is. Um, but they had a copy of Tennis there as well. Uh, for some reason they wanted $10 for the, uh, the Super Tennis. Uh, and it didn't even have a sleeve on the game. So I was like, well, you know, whatever. Uh, but I went and bought this one mainly because I had that sleeve. And also I thought, well, maybe I don't have it. So I spent $3 on it. It'll go in my trade box, which I do have quite a few Sega Master System games. I went through and dug out all my doubles and pulled them out. And I think there was five or six games that I had doubles on. Um, a couple of them I think I didn't have instructions on. Uh, but... Well, at least one of them, I think, didn't have instructions. But I think the other four were okay. They just weren't in as good a shape as the other ones that I kept in my collection. Uh, but they weren't horrible by any means. So um, I've still so now I've got like five or six Master System games that I could stand to get rid of. Um, I thought about doing a, a up-for-trade video, but I really would like to maybe wait a little bit uh, and do it. Uh, because I don't really have the money to ship a bunch of stuff to a bunch of people uh, right this minute. And um, so anyway, I was kind of hard-pressed to find another game. I wasn't sure what I wanted. I looked in their glass case, which they didn't. They don't have any like outrageously priced crap in there. Uh, but the stuff they have in there is kind of so-so. I mean, it wasn't like anything grabbing my eye. And, you know, I found some, some really cool stuff, but it's just they haven't bought anything in that I saw that I really wanted. And so I started kind of revisiting. I, of course, went over and I looked at the 360 games and the PS3 games, and I'm like, they just want so much m money that I don't want to put out for a for a PS3 game or a 360 game at vintage stock, I'd rather go to the pawn shop and take my chance and pay like five or six bucks than pay, you know, seventeen ninety nine for the same game at vintage stock. So uh, I decided not to get a, those, you know, any of those. So I was like, well, let's go over to the uh, Xbox and the uh, the original Xbox and the um, PlayStation 2 games. I started looking through the PlayStation 2 games. Uh, nothing was jumping out at me. The ones that I want, that I've got kind of bookmarked in my head, usually get, go in the glass case. So, I wasn't seeing anything. I think I saw a copy of Persona 4 or something that kind of caught my eye, but I, I decided I didn't want it that bad. Um, 
went over and started looking at the Xbox games, and their Xbox selection is way smaller than the PS2 collection. Um, I wa I've watched a video recently about somebody that was talking about, maybe it was in the comments, somebody's comments or something, they might have been talking about Xbox One or whatever, or what you were going to buy uh, this next gen, and they, you know, made a good point that it seemed like Xbox just kind of threw the original Xbox out there uh, to get their foot in the door um, so they could get the 360 uh, on the market um, quickly. You know, and have a foot in the door, and people would go ahead and buy it because they're like, oh, well, they've been around to this gen, you know, whatever. But their library was a lot of PC ports and a lot of uh, games that were on both consoles. Uh, this was one of those games that was an exclusive, and I, I'm kind of a sucker for exclusives um, for any console, even if they went ahead and made them again for another. Um, you know, another console at the time they were exclusive. So, um, I this is a series that people really love. I have uh, tried to play it once or twice, but I I I just haven't ever dove in. Uh, it's hard for me to, like I said, dedicate a lot of time to certain games. So a lot of times, it's the collector in me that wins out over the uh, <laughs> the actual player. So this was one of those that I decided um, I was going to pick up. I already have a version of it, um, but this is the one they released on the Xbox. Uh, this is a game I know uh, Vampire Mike uh, digs this series. Um, and so I went ahead and picked it up uh, on the Xbox, and that is Shenmue 2. Um, I didn't have this on the Xbox. I have a... Japanese import version of Shenmue 2 that I really can't play because it's entirely in Japanese and there's no real way to to read it unless you can read Japanese. Um, I have a, a burned copy of the PAL region um, or the U UK uh, version of Shenmue 2 which um, is in Japanese, but the uh, the uh, menus are in English, I believe, and you have subtitles. Uh, uh, they speak Japanese, but everything's subtitled, so you can read it, so you can at least play it. And I started playing it, uh, I just didn't get very far into it. Uh, this was shrink-wrapped. I did not open it right as soon as I got in my car, but... I, I just, I don't know. I figured either it's complete or it's not, you know. I've seen copies that were, it says includes feature-length DVD Shenmue the movie. I've seen copies, but they're usually missing that movie disc. And I was like, well, you know, we'll take our chances, uh, whatever. And so I went ahead and picked up this, and I got home, and I opened it up, and lo and behold... Um, it has the movie disc, which is nice. It had Shenmue 2, and then it had the movie, which the movie I've already ripped onto my uh, computer so I can watch it. Um, but it didn't have an instruction booklet. It has this little, like, Xbox ad type of thing um, for a bunch of different games, which is cool, uh, but it was missing the instructions. And I was like, well... You can't win them all, and the fact that it had the DVD uh, movie in it was cool. So I was like, I'm going to go ahead and chalk this up as a win. And, you know, and if we happen to see a, a copy down the road that's around 10 bucks that maybe has the instructions, uh, we'll uh, maybe pick it up then. But uh, I do have Shenmue on my Dreamcast, uh, Shenmue 1. And so I thought this was a good pickup for ten. This was the most expensive game I bought of the morning's adventures. Um, it, I, well, I don't know. Maybe out at the Liberty Store. I'm trying to remember because a bunch of the stuff I I bought quite a few items, but they weren't that expensive. Um, but we're gonna do that in a different video. I'm kind of teasing it. See how I'm doing that? 
Um, so I'm going to lay that down and we'll come back. So I had those two things, and I know from my last experience at the buy two, get one, that you don't have to get three games or three collectibles or three controllers or peripherals or whatever. They'll mix and match them. So I was like, I'm going to go back over and get, get the collectible out of the case that I wanted. Um, and while I was over there, I was looking, it, it's not this, but I was looking at their Transformers, because there's a couple of Transformers, I, I mean, I've got some here, but there were a couple that I always really wanted, and like I said, I've been watching uh, Comic Book Men and stuff, and they've gotten some Transformers uh, collectibles that have come through the door and stuff in some of the videos I was watching, and it kind of made me think, there's one that I had as a kid that I tore the hell out of, and kind of destroyed, and I really wish I had it now. And then there's one that I never owned, and I don't, I don't care about getting it in the box, but I always wanted an Optimus Prime. Um, I've seen them at Vintage Stock with the trailer and everything uh, for around $50, uh, not in the box, and I've never pulled the trigger on it. Uh, but I've always wanted one, so, you know, maybe I should make a mental note to myself, hey... We're going to buy this, you know, budget it in and go and buy it. But the one I really want, and I haven't seen it at any of these places, I need to check online maybe, is uh, the Autobot smoke screen. Uh, that's the one I had when I was a kid uh, that I really loved, and I tore the crap out of it because I was playing with it so much, and basically... Like I said, it got destroyed, more or less. Um, it seems like I always had obscure um, Autobots and Decepticons. It was, I never had the, like, the, the ones that were big names. It was always like I had the Tyrannosaurus Rex, Autobot, Grimlock, and I had, you know... Um, I'm trying to think, you know, just, I, I can't even, I had like the, the, uh, the cars that made the big robot of the Decepticons, and the, the, I had the, uh, the aerial bots, I had like three or four of those, um, but, you know, it, it was one of those deals where I never had like the, the name, the one I really wanted, another one I really wanted when I was a kid was the, um, the Jet Thundercracker, um, I hated Starscream, especially in the cartoon, his voice and his whiny ass uh, kind of <laughs> personality. I just, I didn't like him, but Thundercracker was my favorite um, out of the three uh, Jets. And they did have a Thundercracker there for ten bucks. Um, I considered getting it, but I decided not to because I wanted to get this other thing. Um, and I could tell that... Um, you know, maybe I can go back and get it um, some other time, but I could tell that I really had had a uh, hankering to get this. And so, anyway, I went up, got the lady to come back, uh, get this out of the case for me. It was only $5, and I had a feeling it was not old, old like back-in-the-day old. So when I got it, I, I looked at it, and I did look at the uh, date on the bottom, the copyright date, and... Uh, I figured out pretty quick what this was, and um, anyway, I'll show it. It was uh, five dollars um, there, but it was in this nice box and everything. And it says right on the front uh, what it was. It was a promo item, uh, and it is E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Um, he's in a, and it says right here, uh, Kraft macaroni and cheese. Uh, dinner, so I'm assuming this was packaged with a box of macaroni, because it's the exact same size, um, but it says, see the movie only in theaters, that's what had me a little bit confused when I was looking at it through the deal, because I'm like, what do you mean see the movie only in theaters, to me that meant back in the day, and didn't they have E.T. trading cards? I seem to remember having E.T. trading cards, but I haven't really thought about it or looked recently to, to see. Um, but uh, he's a little bendable toy. Uh, I remember my sister had a little bendable one kind of like this. Um, and uh, on the back is Elliot, and there's a way to cut this box to make it look like E.T.'s riding in the little basket uh, <laughs> on the on the 
right here. It, you, I don't know. You cut it a certain way. This box a certain way. It looks like he's riding in the basket. But um, and then it's got some like movie trivia. Like put these scenes in order. You know. And it has the answers on the bottom. Well, I was looking at it, and I'm like, free, you know, it came with Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. That um, I, I knew right off the bat. But I was like, see movie only in theaters. That kind of caught me funny. And then I looked on the bottom, and it says copyright 2002. Well, I know from... <laughs> I know this is funny because it comes back to the comic book men. They were talking about E.T. in one of the episodes that I watched, and they said it came out in 1982. And I was like, well, this is 2002, so this is a 20-year anniversary piece. So I, I, I looked it up, and yes, they re-released the movie in theaters in 2002, uh, but the fact that it says only in theaters is a little misleading to me because it was already on video and, you know, and stuff at that point. I think on Laserdisc even. I don't know. When did the, um, when did the DVD player really take off? I've had one so long, I just don't even remember. But, you know, it was definitely on VHS anyway. So the only in theaters thing kind of killed me, but... Yeah, it's a macaroni and cheese, uh, craft macaroni and cheese kind of exclusive bendable toy that was uh, shrink wrapped with a box of macaroni, free, and uh, it's still in the box. It's never been removed because he's got like a tie, like a zip tie thing around his feet, and the box is glued shut. It's not like um, uh, something you can just open, so... Yep, that was $5. I thought that was cool. It's going to go up on my shelf. Uh, so I picked up those three items uh, at the um, independent store. And then, like I said, we cruised out and, and hooked up at the other store. I got the hookup, I guess, uh, with about, I think I picked up about nine things out there. And I've got a couple packages that are kind of in in the works. They're coming to me. Uh, nothing like super spectacular, but um, this one I here is the final game. This is the one I picked up, but I ordered it. I probably could have not ordered it, but I got ex I got excited and ordered it, and then it turned around and I ended up seeing it on Friday for basically about what I paid for it to have it shipped and sent to me. Um, this is a game that a lot of people played um, that was a downloadable uh, game and they had released it earlier this year or maybe late last year on disc and I read a bunch of the reviews that said the disc was really funky like there was a lot of uh, skipping and, and loading problems and, and stuff and a lot of people complained that it wasn't even worth buying because it was so jerky and so I put it off for a long time because I was like well I really want to play this game but I've heard it's got problems maybe mine won't have problems because some people said theirs didn't um, but I had put off buying it for a while and then I noticed uh, I went to check prices on a couple of old games to see if they'd come down in price enough that I was wanting to pull the trigger on them or whatever and um, I saw that they were coming out with a game of the year edition and uh so I was like, well, if they're coming out with a Game of Year edition, they know the first disc was jinky. Maybe they'll uh, fix some of the problems on the Game of the Year edition with the loading and the other stuff. Um, to tell you the truth, I don't know if they have because I haven't played this. I'm trying to play The Last of Us, and I don't want to jump into something else. I did stick it in to see if it booted up. It booted up just fine. Um, it came Cyber Monday, like I said. But it is the game... Um, I've heard nothing but good things about this game for the most part. I mean, I read a couple reviews where they're like, eh, you know, it's not as good as The Last of Us or whatever if you really want to play something like this. But, you know, I went ahead and picked it up. It is the Game of the Year edition of The Walking Dead by Telltale Games. Um, like I said, they, they just released this Game of the Year edition. It's got the five... Um, the five episodes 
uh, that they down that were downloadable, and then it says a special episode, uh, 400 days. So I don't know if that's a bonus episode or whatever, uh, but um, it looked like. It looked like it was in pretty, uh, well, it was in good shape. It was brand new. It was shrink-wrapped. The problem is when it came, um, I could hear that the disc had popped loose um, in in uh, transit, but the disc is not scratched or anything. Um, I have not really played this. Uh, if you want to just tell me, hey, yeah, it's a good game, or uh, I didn't dig it that much, that's cool, but please don't spoil anything on it for me. <laughs> if you want to leave a comment, um, I've heard, like I said, a lot of good things about it, so I just couldn't um, couldn't pass it up. And it was thirty dollars, and the other release when it first came out was thirty dollars. And like I said, I saw, uh, I think I got this for twenty six, but I paid like four something in shipping, so it was like. Um, you know, thirty one fifty something or whatever, and then I turned around and saw it at Vintage Stock, brand new for twenty nine ninety nine. Uh, so I probably could have just bought it there and saved the ship, but it really didn't matter. I wasn't in a hurry to play it, and it came Monday. So uh, this game is a mature rating. It's got blood and gore, drug references, intense violence, sexual themes, and strong language. Right up my alley. <laughs> so anyway, that's uh, where we're going to leave off with this. Uh, some pickups. Um, not expecting a, like a Christmas haul or anything. It's basically just going to be, uh, you know, kind of uh, buying stuff for the my sister's kids and, you know, kind of a family thing. Probably get, you know, I told my sister just, you know, maybe buy me some clothes or something. You know, I don't care. I never buy clothes for myself. I buy toys. I said, I buy on my own toys. Just buy me uh, some shirts or something. So, I'm not expecting, you know, a lot for Christmas. But, you know, I'm always buying. So, I picked this stuff up. I'm going to try to put the PlayStation games over in the stack. Put E.T. on the shelf. And, uh, we'll see about watching this Shenmue movie. I don't know if I'm going to dive into, uh... Shenmue anytime soon. Uh, I'll definitely probably get into this Walking Dead uh, before I get into that, but I'm really wanting to play through The Last of Us at this point. So uh, that's it. I'm signing off. That's it and that's all. Um, so uh, thanks for coming by. Um, as always, uh, I'll lie and say I'm going to try to do some gameplays. <laughs> um, I've got a couple that I did for the 3DO and stuff that I just need to do commentary for, uh, but it just hasn't. I haven't had uh, a moment to spare, so to speak. So um, I'm going to sit down and piece this together for you. Hopefully, get it up, get it up, and uh, then uh, we'll have a video for you to watch and enjoy so thanks for coming by again uh i noticed that about eight or ten new people subscribed over the holiday weekend uh thanks uh if you're watching this uh i hope you enjoy it uh i i'm kind of sporadic recently about content i mean i usually try to get something up at least every uh seven to ten days uh five to ten days really i try to get stuff at least one video a week kind of up so anyway uh thank you Thank you for coming by and checking it out. And uh, if you dig it, uh, cool. If you don't, there's always uh, the unsub, which I don't, I don't, you know, hold it against you. If you're not watching it or whatever, and the movies keep popping up in your subs thing, why waste the uh, space on me if you've got space for some of your other favorite uh, channels? So. Um, Anyway, I'm going to get out of here. I'm rambling. That, I do that a lot, too. So uh, thanks for coming by, and we'll see you next vid.